Welcome. This video discusses Whiteside County's Parcel Viewer. Parcel Viewer is a web mapping application that displays information in regards to Whiteside County's tax parcels. Let's take a look at the application. First, I'd like to show you a little bit about the layout. In the header bar, we have the application's title, some links to various websites, the legend widget, layer list, draw functionality, and print functionality. In the upper left hand corner we have some navigational tools where you can zoom in and out of the map. This can also be accomplished by the scroll wheel on your mouse. The home button which takes you to the default extent of the map and the find my location button which is utilized on most mobile devices. In addition there is a search widget, measurement, and base map gallery in the upper left hand corner. Along the bottom we have a scale bar, coordinate information, and some source and credit information. The first task you may wish to accomplish is to find a parcel. Let's take a look at the search widget. You can find a parcel by PIN, by address, or by name. To find a parcel by PIN, simply enter the parcel number and click Apply. This will zoom you to that PIN's location on the map. In this case, the default is the Whiteside County Courthouse. You can also find a parcel by address. The default is also the Whiteside County Courthouse. Or by name. Let's take a look at those parcels owned by John Smith. There are three parcels in the county owned by John Smith. Then we can select the correct one to view. In general, when searching for an address or by name, less is more. For example, if we search for just Knox, that will bring up 27 parcels located along Knox Street, and then we can select the correct one. Let's take a look at a specific property and its attributes. This parcel is located in Fulton Township. You can view in the search results window the PIN, the site address, and the owner name. If we click on the specific property, a pop-up window appears with more information including links, the owner name, current assessed value, and a recent document number. You can also maximize this window. Let's take a look at the first link, which takes you to more tax and property information located in our WEDGE website. This website offers a wealth of information about the parcel with various views such as assessments, exemptions, the legal description, payment history, the tax bill, and taxing bodies. You also want to check that the tax year is current for the information you're seeking. In addition, we have a link to a property record card. This gives various characteristics surrounding the buildings located on the property. Let's take a look at the measurement tool. You can measure an area, a distance, or get a coordinate location. To measure an area, just click to draw on the map and double click to end. Your results appear in this window. You can also change the units.
The same is true for the distance. Just click to draw and double click to end. To view a latitude and longitude location, just click on the map. Next, let's view the content available within each of the base maps in the gallery. The tax parcel base map is the default for the application. Let's explore an area within the city of Rock Falls. You'll notice as we get closer into the map, more content appears, such as municipality names, park locations, section numbers, parcel numbers, lot numbers, block numbers, subdivision names, and at the closest extents, easement types and dimensions, along with parcel and lot dimensions. Let's take a look at the aerial base map. This shows some of the basics in the tax parcel base map, but is more geared toward an aerial view. Finally, we have the street space map. This showcases building footprints, along with addresses, and facility sites. This base map can be especially useful. Often, a property will only list one site address, when in reality, there are multiple addresses and multiple business locations. In addition to the various views the base maps have to offer, we can examine further content in the layer list, such as recent sales and foreclosures, a zoning overlay, and a flood overlay. Let's take a look at recent sales. As we focus in on the city of Morrison, sale locations appear. To view a particular sale, simply click on that location, and a pop-up window will appear with basic information such as the sale date and sale amount. You'll notice at the top it says one of two, along with an arrow to view the next feature. In this case, the parcel behind the sale. If we click on the link to the Wedge website and then click on the sales history view, we can get more information about that specific sale. Let's take a look at the foreclosures as well. This map view now depicts both sales and foreclosures. If a symbol is ever unclear to you, you can view the legend. Often when viewing the zoning or flood overlay, it will be in relation to a specific parcel. Let's take a look at a parcel in the village of Erie and see if we can determine both the zoning and flood overlays. If we turn on the zoning overlay, you'll notice our parcel falls in the R district. If we click on the district, we can get more information such as a description and what jurisdiction it falls into, in this case the village of Erie along with a contact name and number if you need more information about the zoning requirements. This parcel also falls within a flood zone. In this case, Zone AE. Finally, we will delve into both the draw and print functionality. Let's imagine we're a parcel owner looking to construct a new building on our property. Perhaps we'd like to create a map that shows the building's proposed location. Let's take a look at the aerial view as this shows the current buildings on the property. If we open the draw widget, there are several modes and various options for changing the look of our drawing. Let's use the extent tool to construct the building. 
Each tool offers a hint as to its use. Once our building's constructed, perhaps we'd like to add some text. We can choose the color and the font size. It even offers a preview of the text. Let's put a P on the building for proposed. Perhaps we'd also like to add dimensions of the building. I don't really like that dimensions location, so we can click undo and try again. Now let's add the width. Once we have our drawing the way we'd like it, I'd like to print out this map. First I'll move the map so that the building's at the center. When we open the print widget, we can add a title to our map, change the layout, or the format. Once we hit print, our map will be exported to a PDF, which we can open to view and save or print to our local printer. Once we're finished with our drawing, we can go back into the draw widget and hit clear. I want to thank you for taking the time to view this informational video about the Whiteside County Parcel Viewer. Whiteside County reserves the right to change or update the map at any time. If you'd like to learn more information about Whiteside County or Whiteside County GIS, please visit our website at www.whiteside.org.